No, we're recording now. Um, Yuli, you had a question for us in the chat. I didn't get a chance to answer it. Would you like to ask, unmute and ask? Oh, um, well, I am representing Dole Middle School from Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, and fantastic. on Google Classroom, we actually have a bunch of sixth graders joining us as well. Oh, wonderful. So, yes. So we have very intrepid sixth graders this year. And so what are we researching today? I read the little blurb um, to them, and I think that we're trying to get light from the Andromeda galaxy. But that is, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. In fact, I'll show you a quick picture. We go to the Corseline image. Um, uh, these stars that you see here, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Uh, the stars that you see in these images, these are individual stars in the Andromeda galaxy. Um, oh, wow. And you know, well, some how of the- big is our telescope so that we can see the individual stars? Um, our telescope is about, the mirror is about 10 meters in diameter. Um, it's uh, got 36 segments. Each segment is taller than an average size adult. Uh, 1.8 meters. It, uh, the hexagonal segments, there's 36 of them, but it's 10 meters across the diameter of this mirror. It's on Mauna Kea. Uh, this is the second of the Keck telescopes. We are on the Keck 2 telescope. And uh, we are taking spectra, not of one star, but simultaneously of something like 200 stars. Um, and uh, it's hard to tell in this readout, uh, in this uh, image, but in a few minutes, when this exposure reads out, um, you can see we're at 965 seconds out of 1200. When this reads out, and this 20 minute exposure reads out, you'll see that we get spectra in about five minutes, we'll see that you get spectra of many stars at once. Um, and we did something similar last night. Margaret was leading the, the charge. Uh, and Yuli, did you find out about Child of the Scientists through Ohana Kilohoku? You're, you're muted. Yes, I wanted to talk with my sixth graders as well. Um, we actually, I found out um, at Bishop Museum about um, Shadow the Scientist through Institute for Astronomy with Dr. Roy Gal. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, Roy has yes. been one of our um, active Shadow the Scientist uh, partners. So he was able to um, present to some of my students. Um, At the outreach event, right? A few days ago. Oh, oh yes, it was It was actually before our break. So yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a couple of weeks ago. That's right, a couple of weeks ago. Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Is this your first shot of the scientist session? Actually. I had more intrepid sixth graders come and join us at the midnight showing. Say that again. So our, first, our first shadow of the scientist was midnight this weekend. Oh, okay. Sorry. And yes, I did have a handful of sixth graders join me. I'm like, I don't want to go. I'm not going to be awake. But since they wanted to, I. Julie, your audio is cutting out for me for some reason. Just a moment. I'm going to try. I can hear you fine. Yeah, the, the audio is coming in fine. You were saying you had more intrepid? Yes, I had about five students join me for um, the midnight showing of, of um, Shadow of the Scientists. Uh, was so it, a few, it was, they were uh, broadcasting. Um, last Friday, week, right? Yeah, last Friday. Friday right. night, Friday night, Saturday morning. Saturday morning, right. That was Brian and Roy and others, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't able to join that session because uh, in California it was past 3 a.m. But I understand they had a good session. Uh, did you say you're located in o Oahu? Yes, we are Honolulu. We are on Hon Honolulu. Good job, I see. On Oahu in Honolulu. Got it, 
got it <laughs> that's wonderful welcome welcome and uh, please keep coming back we'll have you know um we just put out uh, uh in our registration form uh, after tonight we have something on saturday night um it'll be um yeah saturday night is our next session that's the 22nd we have something on the 26th 27th and 28th of the month as well we have something at the very end of the month so we we seem to do a few of these uh, every week and we hope to do that for the next i don't know n years so these kids to... will be out of school there'll be new school new kids taking their place hopefully um you know, seeing seeing different telescopes different scientists in action and different different research happening different research yeah in fact what's happening tonight is going to be, is a particular research project where we're targeting stars in the disk of andromeda on the 22nd we'll be studying stars in the milky way halo on the 26th and 27th we'll be studying and very distant galaxies complete associated with something called fast radio bursts on the 28th we'll be studying dwarf satellites of andromeda so just different science projects different people most importantly different people so um we're just reading out now Raja sorry yeah yeah but this is about to read out the first of the 20 minute exposure so it should when the readout is complete it'll show up uh, in the screen but we want it'll uh, we I started a sequence of three exposures so how do you do three I can see we can put the integration time is it 1200 space bracket three bracket no it's actually in the instead of saying WFFCS go I we said FCS go I3, right? Uh, where is it? Uh, where did it go? That window is hidden. They did that in the command line. Yes. Uh, where did that window go? DCD readout complete. Yeah, let me just move this out of the way. Um, let me get this in the way. Yeah, you see it says, um, Go I three. Do you see that? Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. Right there. Okay. So let's look at the exposure that read out. Yeah, there you go. Um, and Yuli, you can see there are many, many stars. Every one of these bands is a different star. And um, look, there's a carbon star here, right there. It's all the continuum is all cut up. But yeah, I'm not seeing very strong continuum because of the poor seeing. This one's got a strong continuum, but you can see how fuzzy the trace is. Hmm. Not good. So. The bad column is the only thing that looks sharp. Yeah, we're not going to get a lot of velocities from these if the seeing remains this bad. But um, let's zoom out. So basically, there's focus problems with the uh, seeing at the moment. I guess we're at very high air mass when it starts to get low. Exactly. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't call it focus problems because it's not a telescope thing, but it's really seeing issues. Yeah, just because we're looking through so much air. But yeah, image quality issue is what it is. Um, so here's where you can see that we're observing spectra of many, many stars at once. Every one of these narrow vertical bands, uh, and there's more, I'm zooming out even more. Every one of these, narrow vertical bands where you can barely see the vertical bands now um, is uh, a, a distinct star in uh, Andromeda's southern disks. And we, we tend to get about 200 on a mask. This is the full zoom out.
So you can see the calcium triplet in this star, right there and right there. Can you see that? Let me see if I can narrow it down a bit. There you can see the calcium triplet again. All right, let's see. So I was gonna mention this to Jean, um, Jonah and um, the others in the group there, please, um, you know, if Jane is interested or any, anyone you know, any telescope, if you're interested in running something like a Shadow the Scientist session, please let me know and we can mm -hmm. help you get set up. It certainly looks very interesting. We're sorry we don't have our camera on because we've had to change systems. You've just got my crummy little laptop one, which is why you can only see me. Uh, but always nice to speak to people about our science. So we're never you know, shy. I'll certainly let you know. Yeah, about. and uh, and Jonah, I'm thinking in particular of if there are students and teachers in Australia who don't easily have access to, you know, scientists, science mm -hmm. telescopes. Um, I'd be very keen to connect them. I mean, all this requires is a Zoom link. Mm -hmm. and, no, yeah, I, stable, stable internet connection. That's you know, I shouldn't take that for granted. But we'll spread it around. We've certainly got some outreach people here who, you know. I could be great. Isn't it? I, I must admit, we're quite jealous here looking at your first DMOS mask with your 200 separate spectra with all our <laughs> low surface brightness stuff. We're you know, basically expecting nothing like that. Mm -hmm. You can actually see that you've observed something and got it right, whereas I think for us, it's going to be a lot of reduction just to have a Before you can tell. Yeah. Moment. How faint are, you, uh, are, your, uh, are these globular clusters you're targeting? So we're going to be doing faint dwarf galaxies with surface brightnesses beyond 24 mag per square arc second. I see. So it's going to be real stacking two to three hours of data per galaxy just to get a redshift. And you expect them to have absorption lines only, not emission lines? Absorption lines only, not emission lines. Most of them are in a cluster. I see. Um, Rod, that's a nice question. Are you going to be planning to do a quick look reduction, you know, at your data tonight as you go along? I hadn't planned on doing that. Um, I'm, I understand PyPit is going to be in a place where it can do that, but mm. I, um, we're not set up to do that quite yet. Okay. In fact, we're supposed to do this on, I think tomorrow we have a meeting with someone who's on the PyPit team who's getting us set up in the cloud. So I think at that point we will be able to. Mm. Okay. Okay. We, we have a bunch of nights coming up later. Uh, mm -hmm. in the semester. So um, not all of them are on DMOS and I, Pipit is not working on ESI, for example, not yet. How plug and play do you find it? I've, I've gotten, you know, Pipit running to the extent of using their example and just pressing, you know, enter, 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 and getting a spectrum at the end of it. Do you find you have to do much manual intervention or is it pretty- Not so far, not so far. It's been, it's been great. We've run it on a few masks. Uh, I've run it on a few masks from last fall. I haven't run it on anything from this fall yet, okay. but uh, we'll run it soon. It's it's yeah. been good. Um, yeah. uh, well, thanks very much for letting us, uh, you know, watch and watch and learn. It was great. Thank you. You're most welcome. I think you know we're going to have to be quite rude. It's getting to five o'clock, so it's the end of the day. <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah, no worries, no worries. Of course. Take care. Okay. Nice, nice meeting you all. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Bye. Happy observing. Thanks. Thanks, Aaron. See you.
Uh, one thing I'll be very keen on seeing is how this second exposure stacks up against the first in terms of image quality and um, yeah, spectral quality. Hey, Vicky. So we had a group from Australia connecting. Uh, they'll be using this same instrument and telescope later this month. And so they wanted to uh, remind themselves how the instrument control software and all that work. And you'll be going to be a relatively small group tonight. Um, but this also gives us an opportunity to retouch, uh, um, talk to folks individually. I, just, I wanted to say hi to Yuli uh, on Oahu. I'm on Molokai. So across the channel from you, uh, small, small, very small school, 40 students, middle school, high school. And I had one in earlier, but I, he does have problems with internet uh, connection. So just, just me right now. But hi, Yuli. And Yuli, I had the pleasure that my, my colleague and I had the pleasure of visiting Vicky and her students on Malakai uh, last month. That was just terrific. I'm going to visit again in December. They all say they all said hello. Aww, thank <laughs> we you. Just came back. We had a two week break. We take two weeks. We're an independent school. We had a two week break and just came back. So we're all kind of uh, readjusting to the the schedule of um, I'll, 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 we have an extended school day. We go four days a week and longer days. And I think pretty much everyone's wiped out right now. Yeah, unfortunately, when Institute for Astronomy came, um, they were only able to really um, see maybe two classes as opposed to the five total that we have. So um, about 60% of our students didn't get to participate. So we're gonna have to do something again. <laughs> Hey, Yael. Well, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Kind of what you're waiting. I, a couple of thoughts for, uh, and Raja knows this. I, my science background is extremely limited. I am fascinated by this. I, I'm just in awe of the technology, um, in awe of what I'm seeing, the way I'm seeing it. Um, and Raja, I had one thought. I. I wish my grandmother were alive to see this. She was uh, born in the eight, late 18, like 1880s, I believe, and a very progressive woman, self-taught, read extensively to, to her last day at age 95. Wow. And she would just, she would be, this would be something wonderful. So I'm gonna try to, to telepathy it to her. <laughs> You know, my grandmother was born, my paternal grandmother was born in 1884 too. Uh, my, my maternal grandmother was younger than that, but yeah, this would have been science fiction in those days. I, I think, you know, I think some people uh, have the ability, and my, my grandmother was a wise woman. Um, and I know we all kind of feel that about our, grand, my other grandparents were, Okay, but she was really a wise woman who saw um, way beyond the boundaries, traditional boundaries, and imagined way beyond the boundaries. Um, I don't think she'd be really surprised, by the way. I think she'd be completely fascinated, which is one reason she comes to mind. Yeah. Hey, Raja, sorry I'm late. I was out of water polo game until just a bit ago. Oh, uh, no. What no, are we no. looking at? So, um, Yael, I, I should introduce you to uh, folks here, but um, 
Um, we are we are actually looking at uh, we're doing a we're looking at a mask in the southern disc of Andromeda, which is not too different from what we did on the twenty sixth and twenty seventh of September. We're continuing that program on the twenty sixth, twenty seventh of September during the bulk of the night. We we looked at stars in the southern disc of Andromeda. We're continuing that program in, during this half night and one half night on the 16th of November. But you'll be happy to know that at the beginning of the night, we observed um, those PS1 RLRA, the beginning of the night ones, and the middle of the night one, because you know the, uh, the sky has progressed enough in the last month that we got a two-minute exposure on each of those three. So we have, you know, uh, this is the 1200G rating, not the 600ZD. Um, so we got that, and we hope to get um, some more spectra in November. Maybe not of the first two, because they would have set, but of the the middle of the night one. Sounds good. And um, Vicky, you've met Yael before. Uh, Margaret, you haven't. Julie, you haven't. Yael is a high school student who worked in our research group this summer as part of the SIP program. And uh, their group was looking at time resolved spectroscopy of RLRE, looking to see how um, an RLRE's absorption lines change with pulsation phase, how velocities change, how um, the line strengths change, and how different lines give different velocities even at a given instant. So, those are the sorts of things their group were looking at. Were you uh, playing in the water polo game? Yeah, I was. I'm goalie um, oh, cool. for my school's team. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I played water polo too in high school and in college. Oh, that's fun. In college too? Well, it was club. In college, I didn't play varsity, but it was still fun to keep playing. It's a good game. Mm -hmm. Our little school of 40 students, um, water polo is the favorite game. I coached the swimming, and I remembered when I swam eons ago, uh, the favorite thing was break out the water polo uh, goals after swim practice. And so we started doing that. And uh, I wish I knew more. Yeah, come on over and, and <laughs> I'd love fun. to. Yeah, come on over and help me out. Uh, I'm, I do club swim. So like during most of the year I do swim, but then for water polo season, I do that at school. So like, I don't play this usually, but it's really, really fun. That sounds about like us. <laughs> we started the recording and all that a little late, Kyle. We didn't start at um, 10 o'clock. California or seven o'clock Hawaii, because um, our we were still scrambling with the science experiment at the beginning of the STS session. So I'm happy for this to continue a little bit beyond our nominal 9 p.m. Hawaii or midnight California. Um, have you heard from Roy? I uh, no, I haven't in a bit. Me neither. I, I emailed him a. A couple of times, but, uh, but not him specifically to a group that included him. So I haven't heard back, must be busy. Let's see, I wanna see who else is on our Zoom call tonight. Um, let's see. Kara, Joseph, Eric and Richard, Feel free to introduce yourself if you if you feel up to it. Uh, hey, Kara. Hi, I guess I can introduce myself. Um, I'm an undergrad student at UH Manoa. I'm studying astrophysics. So I thought this would be a cool way to get more involved. Wonderful. Where are you studying again? I, I missed that. At UH Manoa. Oh, wow. Fantastic. One of, the best, uh, one of the best astronomy departments in the world. That's why I came over here. I'm originally from San Diego. Um, my other school I was looking into was Santa Cruz, actually. Ah. So it was cool seeing that that's where you are. Nice. That's another great place to study astronomy. 
Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, which year of your studies are you in? Um, I just transferred over here, so I'm junior, senior. Um, I'm double fun. majoring, so it's kind of taking me a little bit of extra time to get all my classes done. What What is your second major? Uh, computer science. I see. And did you find out about Shadow uh, the Scientist through Roy? Uh, yes, it's actually been bounced around through a couple different people in my department. So I've oh, heard wonderful. about it from a cluster. <laughs> That's great. This is good to know. I mean, the word is just spreading. Um, you know, even though the program, well, I, I we first started doing this two years ago in November 2020. November 6, 2020 was the first time we tried this, where we invited, um, you know, target targeted an invite to a, a group of not not students, but just just parents, parents of students who have been in our high school program, and they loved it. They loved it. They asked great questions. They were not none of them were astronomers. They were all technical people, but they asked great questions. And so then a few months went by and February, we really started this on a regular basis, February of 21. So it's been going for about a year and a half. And, um, but it's gradually, uh, more people are finding out about it in different parts of the world. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Tell your friends if you, as they, as they say, if you like it, tell your friends. If you don't like it, tell your enemies. Yes, definitely. I've been trying to tell, tons of people about it. I mean, it's just so interesting to see and it really gives you a, at least for me, um, I want to be an astronomer in the future. Oh, so it really gives me a good complete. look into what you're doing. Oh, it's, it's uncurated content, right? It's just, you know, you're directly looking into an experiment, which is you know, pros and cons. So I want to look at something closely now, which is um, we are going to see the new exposure overwrite this exposure that is currently on the screen. As soon as it says readout complete or shortly after it says readout complete, it'll replace the existing exposure with this one. And I want you to tell me if the if these vertical stripes have gotten any more prominent or sharper, like you see this one. This one is already quite visible. So let's wait for it. Let's see, where is it in the readout? It's near, it's at 82. So when it gets to 100%, it'll read out. And you'll hear the audio where it says readout complete. Are you getting the telescope ACD audio? readout complete. Yeah, we are. Oh, that got better. I could see that got better. Some of these very faint traces that were hardly visible before have gotten better. So the seeing is getting better. And do you see this gap here uh, where my cursor is? To the left of my cursor, do you see a gap in this line? Let me see if I can. Here's what I mean by the gap. Okay, here's what I mean by the gap. Do you see the gap now? Margaret, this is calcium triplet. Oh and yeah, I see it. Super clear. This wavelength, the rest wavelength should be 8498, but it's highly blue shifted because you're looking at the um, disk of Andromeda that's moving towards us at 500 kilometers per second. So that's the 8542 line. This is the 8498 line, the two lines. The, the line that's above this at 8662 tends to land in a forest of night sky line. So it's harder to see it. Let's see if I can spot it. I don't think we'll be able to see it. It tends to land, uh, the 8662 line lands in the middle of this stuff here, this gunk here. Mm. I think it's this right there but it's hard, harder to tell. I'm not convinced it's this, but I, but I am. I have the sense that the image quality is improving. Hmm. 
we should be able to pull out velocities for most of these stars. When you can see calcium triplet in a single 20 minute exposure, of course, we'll be able to pull it out, but uh, even for the fainter ones. Hey, Jim, welcome back. Hello, I just got home. <laughs> Speak of the devil, Roy, we were just talking about you. Anything good? Very good things. Um, oh, we've, so. so we just got spectra of uh, Aralari. Oh, okay. Uh, um, three of them, individual measurements of three stars that we've observed before. We, we got them multiple times in September. So got one more data point tonight on each of three stars. Okay. We'll get them again in September. These are all part of the MON program? All, all part of the monitoring program, yeah. Okay. Okay. These are all PS1 RLRE. They're about 13th magnitude. Could be very high quality spectra. You could see in the, you took two minute spectra, you could clearly see the H alpha line, the calcium triplet. You could see them clearly it, without any reduction of the data. Could okay, just wow. Them raw. Excellent. Uh, uh, class is keeping you busy? Yeah, pretty busy. Uh, electricity and magnetism one, quantum mechanics one, and introduction to cosmology. Wow. But I uh, got a good strong start, uh, keeping ahead. I'm a couple days ahead of my homework this week even. That's uh, great. So that's, good. that's great. Um, I'm having a bit of an allergy attack. Just a fair warning. My eyes are watering, my nose is running. Oh, so if you sorry. see me wiping my face, it's uh, nothing too upsetting. And um, Kara, Roy is an undergraduate like you who transferred to Santa Cruz. Um, and Kara just transferred to University of Hawaii. You, you both are astronomy majors, but Roy, this is your, it's your final year? Yes, if uh, everything goes okay. It looks like I owe a history class, but I think I can uh, get some paperwork to make that go away. <laughs> yes, final year. The history class will be history. Um, yeah. Where did you transfer from? Oh, from uh, Fullerton College out in Orange County. Oh, Fullerton. Uh, okay, I was at Orange Coast. Oh, okay. Nice. I took one class at Cyprus. That would be another sister oh. school, right? Yeah. Oh, I know a lot about Cyprus. <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> exactly one class there. Wait, I went to Fullerton College Cal for State two Disneyland, years. Though. Cal State Disneyland, pretty much. No, I was at the uh, City College, FJC. It, it graduated to just college. Oh, I see. It, it was already just Fullerton College in 1980 when I was there. Oh, was it? My younger it, it sister did, went there. It did used to be FJC. I think it changed like when I was in junior high or something like that. Okay. My and sister I went, went to, there in 2015 or something like that, and she calls it FJC, but we never called it when I went there a couple years later. Yeah, I think that, you know, it was originally that. And so it's one of those was, local things. I think so. I went to Fullerton High School too, which we used to call Fullerton College ATS for across the street. <laughs> yeah, <Yep>, literally. <laughs> They have a small parking lot that's on our side of the street, but we're not allowed to use. That was frustrating. <clears throat> Actually, across the street the other way where there's that bridge in the other part of the campus, that used to be a junior high school. That's where I went to junior high school. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, the uh, no, the college has swallowed all that up. Yeah, they, that that happened 20, 25 years ago. No, oh, okay. They're still expanding too. They just bought one of the uh, another local neighborhood.
this feature in the spectrum that I'm running my cursor along, these three steps, one, two, three, it's titanium oxide. That's 7,100 angstroms. So, um, be interesting to see what we pull out of the data after they're reduced. Is titanium oxide something that's inside a star? In the outer layers, yes. I mean, there's typically titanium and oxygen. And if the temperature is low enough in the outer layers, so if it's below about 4,000 Kelvin, the outer layers, then um, the atoms are moving around slowly enough that molecules don't get dissociated by collisions and titanium and oxygen can bond to form TiO. The temperatures are around 4,000 Kelvin, not in the interior of the star, but in the surface, in the, what, what you think of as the atmosphere of the star. Um, you do get not just titanium oxide, you get other molecules as well. Uh, magnesium hydride is a common molecule. Um, you'll get, uh, let me think. Let me think what other molecules. I think you get vanadium oxide as well, VO. Um, CN, cyanogen, C2, CH, you get those in carbon stars. But yeah, various molecules form once the temperature, again, depending on the chemical composition and temperature, but the temperature has to be below about 4,000 Kelvin for these molecules to survive. Google tells me titanium oxide is the most pervasive spectroscopic feature of cool stellar atmospheres That's in right. the near infrared region. Google is right in this case. Yes, very much so. Yeah, I can, I can share something else on my screen to show you that. This is a spectrum of a star um, in what we collected last year. Let me see if I can show you what titanium looks like. Yeah, there you go. So. Uh, this is intensity on the y-axis and the wavelength on the x-axis. And at 7,100 angstrom, I'll uh, zoom into this feature. You could see that you have these very sharp drops. Now, the white spectrum is the spectrum of the star in triangulum. Um, these very sharp drops are produced by molecular bandheads, TiO, titanium oxide molecular bandheads. The cyan spectrum is another star, is a template star that also has titanium oxide in it, not, not in exactly the same proportion. That's why you see the details of the features are slightly different. But if you look closely, this very sharp drop, then the subsequent rise and fall, the second dip here, these are there in both spectra. This very sharp drop here, um, this, there's a tiny dip here, there's a much bigger dip in the white spectrum. You know, much of this stuff that looks like noise is not noise. You see it in two completely different stars. Um, but this, this sort of these three dips that we also saw in this spectrum, oh, it's gone now. Where was it? One of these stars just in the raw spectrum looked like it was obviously there. Let me see if I can spot it again. Not sure I can, but um, it looked obvious when I saw it. No, having a hard time spotting it. You know, you know, uh, you know how I was saying the sort of these three steps there. Those are the three steps. Oh yeah, here we go. One step. Sorry, let me. Yeah. Oh no, did I lose it again? Would we expect the those steps down to look like dark bands? 
We wouldn't expect them to look like dark bands, but what we would expect them to do is, we expect to see a change in the, okay, do you see this here? I'll at least try to bring it down a little bit. No, every time I see it, I make it go away again. Okay, you can sort of see it here, right? Do you see how this continuum uh, gets bright and white and then there's a sudden drop? Okay, that is as you're marching upwards, you're increasing wavelength. That's like, I'm gonna go back to this other spectrum that we were looking at. It's like you're going up and up and up and then it suddenly drops. You go up again, it drops, you go up again, it drops. And you'll see this in the spectrum. You see it, it keeps going up and then it drops right next to my cursor, to the left of my cursor. Mm -hmm. It keeps going up again, then it drops. This I is the see. third drop. If I zoom in, it's pretty clear. Yeah, yeah, when you zoom in, it's pretty clear. And that like, gap is this thing here, is this dip here. You, the gaps are these very sharp dips here. In fact, in the cyan feature, the, the dips are really prominent and the white spectrum it isn't. But of course, this white spectrum is of a completely different star than the one we were just looking at. Given how bad the seeing is, I'm tempted to do one more 20 minute exposure on this one. Um, I have a question about that. Why, why wouldn't you do one longer, like 40 minute exposure instead of separate 20 minute ones? It's a good question. You know, as, as you make the exposure times longer, they tend to collect uh, what I call cosmic rays, just particle hits hitting the silicon. And you see that here. Uh, in this spectrum, like these spots, these white spots all over the place, this very sharp spots, these are cosmic ray hits. If you double the exposure time, you get twice as many of them. And every time these things hit, they're um, basically compromising those particular pixels. Um, and by taking short exposures, um, you're, it's unlikely that the same pixel gets hit twice or three times or four times. You always want to take multiple exposures and keep them short instead of taking one very long exposure. Does that, does that answer your question? Um, I guess related to that, when you um, like sharpen the image using the second exposure, would the, the you're saying that using that technique doesn't no. isn't affected by the uh, cosmic rays? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I didn't sharpen the image. It's just that the atmospheric quality improved between the first and second. And that's okay. something I could see. Okay. I thought, I thought you combined the data. Or something. Uh, no, no. We haven't combined them yet. And in fact, um, in the reduction software, we're going to use each, each exposure is reduced separately. And then the resulting, the results are then combined um, either into a 1D spectrum or into a velocity measurement. Can I, can I keep asking questions? Yeah, yeah, please do, of course. Um, so when you were talking about how the spectrum dips for the titanium oxide, yes. Um, why, why, is, why is there like a vertical line on those? Or like why on some stars there's a vertical line as opposed to the horizontal like bright peaks, I guess? I'm trying to understand what you mean by vertical line. Do you mean in this plane that we're looking at here where my cursor is? Or yes. in uh, so like, this, um, these vertical streaks? Mm -hmm. That's the light of the star. Each vertical streak like that is a light of a star. But then why, are, why, why do some stars not have that? Ah, they're faint. They have that. They're just too faint to be seen. Like uh, the star is faint. This one is faint. These are so faint they can barely be seen. So could that vertical line be interpreted as like a sort of continuous spectrum? Yes, that's exactly what that is. The vertical line is a continuum. Okay, thank you. 
tell us about where you are in your studies. Um, it's a bit. I'm a. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm a junior at uh, Santa Cruz, I guess. Um, okay. I, I recognized Roy. Oh, excellent! Excellent. Classes. How did you find out about Shadow? Uh, I think when. When I was there in the spring, I talked to Tali. Oh yeah, fantastic! Yeah, Tali works with us. Oh yeah, Tali's pretty cool. Right. I, I went to one when when I was in. I'm taking uh, I'm taking a quarter off right now. Um, okay, okay. I when I was in Santa Cruz, I uh, I did go to one, but I think you guys had some like weather issue or something, so I think it was kind of a slower session. Welcome to the life of an astronomer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, that's weather issues are never far away. <coughs> Shehu, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Um, remind us, please, where you're connected from. You've told me before and I've forgotten. Yeah, if you want, uh, if it's easier to type it into the chat, feel free to do that. Uh, you're muted. Still muted. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now you're unmuted. We can hear you now. Your audio is very cut up, not being able to understand you. I'm not being able to understand you, at least. Exposure complete. Sorry. Yeah. It's... Take... Otherwise... Yeah, your audio is cutting up a lot. Uh, you might have to type into the chat. There is a live transcript feature in Zoom. There is, let me see if I can activate it, but let me see, live transcript. DCD readout complete. Yeah, the transcript won't work because the audio is so choppy. Yuli, how are your students doing? It's getting late for, for you guys, right? But how are you? Yeah, you, um, your group didn't end up doing a poster for the double AS, right? If I remember correctly, Roy and... Uh, yeah, no, we did not. Okay. okay. It's not too late. You can do a late abstract. It's actually not too late to do it. That'd be really fun if we could do that. So you guys should talk, Roy, and any of the others. Is it a poster? 
Yeah, for the American Astronomical Society meeting. The original mm-hmm. abstract date was October 11th, but they take late abstracts um, up to a certain date. I forget what the, you should check it out. Okay. It's the 241st meeting to AAS 241, if you do a search. There's a separate deadline for what's called late breaking abstract. So, you know, I think it's fair to say if you're collecting these data uh, now in October, if you want to show some of these, it's good justification for late breaking abstract. You could, it doesn't mean you can't include old data you collected before. There's a really cool animation on the website. Really? As you move the mouse around, it clears up a small circle of the picture, but then it fades back. Which um, uh, which website? The AAS website, no? AAS.org? Yeah, yeah. It's probably worth going to the website just to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm easily entertained. <laughs> okay, so I think we should do another exposure here. I forgot that the exposure finished. So let me do one more here. Is this um, a fourth exposure on that same, the first mask? Yeah, I'm just doing a fourth 20 minute. Just because the scene quality is so poor. And I think I wasn't paying attention. I think it finished the third exposure a little while back. Let's see what time it finished it at. Be able to tell. So these are 20 minute exposures, as you can see. And you can see that the gap in time between them, you see how this is 0514, and this is 0535. So it's about 21 minute gap. And this one is another 21 minute gap, right? Because 0535 and 56, it takes a little more than even though it's a 20 minute exposure, the cycle time is a little more than 21 minutes. Let's see what when it reads out the next exposure, which is number 72. That's what it should be working on now. 71 was the last one read out, 72 is what it's working on. Um, what I'll do is highlight the next target for Tony. And that's in this window up here. C is the next target. Tony, I've started a 20 minute exposure. After this one finishes, we'll want to move to the highlighted target, but we have a ways to go. We have more than 15 minutes. Okay, thanks for the heads up. Thanks. That WS special effect, I have to go see this now. Would we be categorized as uh, research contributed presentations? Yes. And I would do something called an I poster. Mm-hmm. And it would be a progress report on where things are, you know, what spectra. Um, we want to show off some of our best sampled RLRE, the ones with the most measurements. And um, th- these are electronic posters. So having a you know, phase on one axis and velocity measurement on the other axis would be great. I can imagine that for a given star, you could do velocity measurements versus phase from different absorption lines, one from H alpha, one from the calcium triplet. And that would be all very, very instruct- instructive. Would the yeah, uh, gonna... poster format support the animation we always dreamed of? 
I don't know. So I was just thinking of that. I don't know. We, we, you should prepare that anyway, but uh, I mean, use that in talks. But um, when you present an eye poster, they also allow you to do a short video advertising the poster. So that could be that video. Pretty good advertisement, the, the whole research project. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, would making this poster um, include going to the conference or a meeting? If you wanted to, if you wanted to, right? So the rule is that the lead author of the poster has to register for the meeting, but the meeting is gonna be offered in hybrid mode. You can either go or take part remotely. Are Will you, you going ask? to be going? I am going to be going, yes, yes. When is the late breaking abstract deadline? Is that sometime in November? The 30th. November 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have time. And that's just to do the abstract. The posters are not due till the meeting itself, which is in January, 8 to 11th, 8 to 12th January. So you have another month and a half beyond the abstract deadline to put work into the poster. It's in Seattle. It's in Seattle. Yeah, uh, the 8th through 12th of January. That's right, 8th through 12th. I'll be there as well. Margaret, you will be there? Yes. Fantastic. Who else said I'll be there as well? Was that you, Margaret? Or I couldn't see. That was me, Margaret. Yes. Was, oh, okay. you'll was, be there. Do you know what? I'll be talking you... about the triangulum star formation history. Right. I'm on your poster, I think. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm planning to do a talk, but yeah, you are oh. on it. <laughs> okay. And isn't one of the students on there as well? Isn't there a student of Ben's who's doing a poster? Yes, there is. Um, Start, name uh, starts with a Z. Kiros Hinton. Oh, no, no. I'm thinking of someone whose last name starts, whose first name starts with a Z. Hmm. He's got a couple of students and I don't, I don't, I haven't interacted with all of them personally. I think one of them is doing a, a, a fast poster or a fatter poster. I don't know which. Oh, you might, he has a new postdoc, um, Joe. How do you spell it? Z-U-J-O? Z-H-O-U, I think. Oh yeah, let me, let me check. I think I have this somewhere. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. Are you on the poster as well? Um, I think I might be, yes. Let me do a search by your name. Oh, it's Z-H-U-O. Yes. And his last name is he? Uh, she. She. Okay. Chen, C-H-E-N. Undergraduate, yeah. I think. Um, no? Or postdoc? No, postdoc. Post okay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're right. I'm mixing um, this you up with someone else. Yeah. Yeah, we are both on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something like, um, I think it's 11 double AS abstracts. I last counted that one. These are the ones I know about. Maybe there are others I don't know about. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've asked to give an education talk about this, this kind of program like Shadow the Scientist in the hope that other astronomers will, will be inspired to do this. It's really great. What usually goes on at these meetings? Like it's four days long. Is it the same thing every day? No, no. completely different things on different days. No, go ahead, go ahead, please. Oh, so people are giving um, a mixture of like oral presentations, like talks about their research. Um, and 
then people also will present posters. So there's kind of both of those things going on. And it's the biggest conference for astronomers in the country. So um, there's, I don't know, maybe like a couple thousand people there. And usually there will be somewhere, something like 10 sessions running kind of in parallel all day. So you kind of have to pick and choose which, which things you want to go to. So there's kind of there's more topical sessions where people are giving shorter talks generally because they try to make sure that everyone who wants to give a talk can. So you give pretty brief talks. Um, and then they have the plenary talks, which are like more hour long talks where they kind of invite people who've done, you know, who are going to give like a broader kind of overview type talk. And it's just talks every day, right? You know, there's also yeah. there's posters and there mm -hmm. are booths. There are booths that are around um, all meeting. Like So it starts on a Sunday night and it runs for four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sunday night, they have an opening reception and stuff like that. So they have a whole bunch of networking events, but they right. in the main poster hall where the post, different posters are presented every day, there's also booths by, uh, for example, every major astronomy organization like the Nash NOAA Labs, uh, every major radio telescope, every major optical telescope, Keck will have a booth there, you know, um, kind of France, Hawaii will have a booth. So all, all major telescopes, uh, sometimes all the major missions, you know, like mm -hmm. satellite missions, like NASA, et cetera, they, those booths are there throughout the meeting. They gave out cool swag and they did all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. And then, you know, the Space Telescope Science Institute booth, they'll ha they have what's called a hyper wall. They'll have presentations there. Uh, talks, you know, that are uh, sort of more less technical, you know, more there, there are press conferences that go on. Um, you know, the press come to this meeting because they know there's going to be astronomy results and astronomers bring their, often save their results for this because they know the press's attention will be on astronomy at this time. Yeah. So um, it's become this, it's actually the largest astronomy meeting in the world, not just in the U.S. But oh, wow. You know, yeah, no, I'm just, I will only be back in the country on like the 10th. So it's like, if it's still going after that, it would be really fun to go to. Yeah, uh, um, it, if you get back on the 10th, you'll be able to be there for the 11th, 12th, yeah. But you'll miss half the meeting, 8th and 9th. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes people go for just one day and that's still fine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I'm 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 back from Hawaii on the fourth. I'm actually going to Israel. Oh, I'm December. going too. When are you going? Oh, I'm, I'm going, going in, in the winter. Yeah, I'm, I'm going, going for December. a conference in early December. Then I'm oh, going back. When is that? Hawaii. I think um, I'm going like 23rd of December. No, this is well before. Oh, so this is like uh, I think six to ninth or something like that, or fourth to ninth. It's at, yeah. I'm uh, just going for a couple of weeks over winter break to see family and friends. Yeah, this one's at, in Jerusalem at the Hebrew University. Yeah. They have a really nice campus. Yeah, I have I have been there. I've been there a couple of times actually. And when I say it, Jerusalem has so much character. Where are you staying in Jerusalem? Or are you staying like somewhere outside of it? I'm sure. Um, I I'm sure we will be in Jerusalem, but I'm I haven't looked at. Um, you know, they haven't sent too many details so far, um, but uh, what, what one thing they've said is we'll have talks early in the morning, we'll have talks late in the evening, and then in the middle, we'll, we'll set aside time so you can watch the World Cup soccer matches that are going on <laughs> in the same time zone. That sounds Israeli. <laughs> yeah. So that immediately endeared me to the conference. I said yes right away. So you guys, I think we have reached our bedtime. All right. <laughs> of course, of course. I completely understand. We have school I'm not sleeping tomorrow. Yet. <laughs> This is so wonderful, Yuli, that you connected. I'm really happy you did that.
Thank you and bye. Bye. So um, one of the groups that's been connecting on a regular basis in September, they weren't here today, is a um, school in Calcutta. It's called Future Hope. And they've been amazing. They've been absolutely amazing. Cheryl, you saw them several times in September. Are they going to join some more sessions? I hope so. I, I haven't. I had hoped they would join today. They generally can't join when sessions are on weekends because the 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 students don't have good access at uh, the, the they are this is a residential school so the school students live in one of four homes that are run by the school and then they all come together in this one school building um, but the, their homes don't have um, good internet connection so they've been groups of typically groups of 25 30 mixed grades from grade six to grade 11 and they've been amazing they've been asking uh, been totally fearless about asking questions which have been great I'm hoping to go visit that school in person next time I'm in Calcutta. Oh, what are we currently observing? I think you stopped screen sharing. Oops, I should go back to screen sharing. We are on the last of the masks, or the last of the exposures for this mask. Uh, it's 900 and something out of 1200, so it's about five minutes to go. So we're on the same mask, just to build up signal to noise, one more exposure. And after that, we'll go to the mask that's labeled C. We're not observing mask B because we've already observed that region uh, through other masks. So we're jumping from A to C right there. And the fact that that row is highlighted means that's that signals to Tony that that's our next target. Um, he'll move the telescope to that, that object after this one is finished. So I'll be curious to see again when it reads out, which is you know, still a ways away, still four minutes away, when it reads out to see if the, the quality of these spectra got better. I'm gonna zoom into a region where there's a lot of faint, yeah, like this place where there's a lot of faint, um, traces to the continuum. Raj, I have a question. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are these, these masks are in the southern half of Andromeda? That's right, in the, they're to the west of M32. Oh, okay. I was about to ask how you chose the placement of them. Um, I, I, I can show you a picture and show you what we tried to do. Um, let's see. Let's do that right after this readout and be, uh, let's align the next mask and I'm happy to do that. I want to, I don't want to miss the readout mm -hmm. of this one. But uh, the short answer is we, we wanted to work in a region of the, um, you, you know, the FAST survey, right? Have you been working yeah. with? The, okay, so the FAST survey, uh, hasn't been completed. So we wanted to work in the regions of the FAST survey that have been completed. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a contiguous region around M32, mostly M32 and West. So we wanted, we created a tiling pattern that uh, would best fit that, you know, would fill that region uh, and with minimal gaps, sometimes double coverage, usually double coverage, so the same star has two chances of making it under a mask. Um, but also, so that was, those were some of the considerations. And also we wanted the mask to mostly be horizontal, so they are long parallactic. And one final thing we did this sort of, this was my crazy idea is to do a Japanese fan pattern with one pivot point at M32, so that 
the stars mm -hmm. that are near M32 have many chances of making it onto a mask, and that's that way we can build up signal to noise. Uh, I'll show you a pattern in a moment. Um, that was a lot of fun. Those are the kinds of things I love to do. So are you studying the kinematics of the stars in M32 and what that says about kind of how it's being accreted into M31? Yeah, so a couple of things, exactly right. So we're trying to actually do a kinematic. Uh, so the relative kinematics of M32 and M31 have already been measured. That means we know their mean velocities. But looking at structure, I mean, there could be stars that belong to M32 that are in the process of being pulled out by M31. The photometry suggests that. Can we see that in velocity space? Uh, mm -hmm. It's one question. But also, we're trying to measure M32's 3D velocity, meaning um, wow. uh, we're trying to measure HST proper motion uh, of M32 stars relative to background galaxies and M31 stars relative to background galaxies. You can't do that for individual stars. So you have to co-add the signal. And you have to need you need to know which stars to co-add. And so the velocities tell us which ones are M31 D stars, which ones are M32 stars. So it's sort of closely tied to the HSD proper motion program. And then chemical abundances that Ivana is going to be measuring. Doug is going to be looking at the velocity dispersion as a function of stellar age in the southern disk, sort of following up what Amanda did in the northern disk. Exposure oh, complete. Here we go. And and the readout. Okay, so Tony, we're ready to move to the next target, please. Absolutely. Okay, we are moving. Thank you. I'm pretty sure I, we lost a bit of time there where the sequence of three had finished and I hadn't noticed. But I will be able to measure we how much. Are in position and guiding, you can begin your alignment. Oh, thank you. Okay. We're still waiting for the readout to finish. So I'm just going to go to zero order here. And okay. and then um, I want to also look at this readout very closely. DCD readout complete. Okay. Watch for these streaks to get. They stayed the same in my book. I don't think they got any more prominent. Maybe slightly more, I don't know. Anyway, that was the quick test. Okay, ready to guide, uh, ready to do course align. So, so we have to change the mask here from A to C, apply. It's already in. Uh, so it's moving from A to C, moving this to zero order. Let's go to course line. Let's choose C over here. It should refresh this image. And we're ready to take a guider image, right, Tony? Um, yeah, you can take a guider image. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the previous one. Many of the guide stars look faint. Move telescope. It looks good. I'm going to go to final line, but let's make sure that the grating is in place. Grating and mask are both in place. You see it's got zeroth order and mask in place. Okay, let's start the final line. Let's hope the seeing is better. So how many hours is it over? Two hours, 29, that's not bad. We started at four hours, so. Mm -hmm. So you see how it temporarily sets it to dual A plus B, direct object, it temporarily does that. It sets the exposure time to 20, does that automatically and then resets it. Exposure complete. Okay. Moment of truth. Hmm. 
CCD readout complete. Ooh. What? Get rid of this thing. Something's bad there. Yeah. But the others are consistent. Let's see. Let's make sure. Yeah. Yeah, the others are pressed are consistent and moves and retakes. So the star is nearly off the edge of the box, that's all. Mm -hmm. In X. Not so bad in Y. Seeing isn't great today. I'm sort of feeling, um, having some regrets that we didn't, but I wonder if you had done more, more 20 minute exposures on that mask. It's always a trade off, whether we get, try to get every faint star or try to get a whole set of new stars on a mask. Mm -hmm. I think we've done the right thing, but I, Exposure um, complete. I struggle with that. Okay, let's see how this goes. CCD readout complete. Oh, good. I'm going to do send moves only, but let me just make sure that there's nothing. Wow, it just dropped box one altogether automatically. So the Y, is it um, the offsets negative 0.2? Do we need to run it again if that, is it like the absolute value of that needs to be less than the threshold? Yeah, absolute value needs to be less than the threshold. But I'm going to send moves, and but not not do a retake because there's no rotation. The rotation is well below the threshold. So this is done. And we go over here. We restore. And we read the mask name. It should drop the align basically, yeah. And, oh, I have to apply, sorry. Mm -hmm. Then here samples. Um, how is this looking? Yeah, FCS is complaining that the tilt of the grating doesn't match. Of course, it's still resetting it, so. I'm going to do three. It went out here, clean shot right through the box. That's not good. Oh, there we go.
The images look rounder for what it's worth. Of course, this is a different mask, different.
Oh yeah, I was going to show you the mask pattern, Margaret. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can bring that up. Ah, oh, so it's that kind of lavender part. The lavender part is the is the Japanese fan. Uh huh. And then uh, the yellow masks are what we're observing, and then one of them is at forty degrees. Sorry, what was the lavender part again? That's the fan pattern, Japanese fan pattern. These lavender masks: one, two, three, four, five. There's actually ten masks. We did a pair of masks at the same location, just different targets, same, same alignment boxes. Mostly different stars. We repeated the faint ones to improve signal to noise. We can see that any star that li lies within this region of M32 can make, has a chance of making it onto any and all of these 10 masks. Maybe we can. Um, if we target faint stars in this region, which is what Lara and Ivana did, then you just build up this signal to noise. And the dark, um, the bold black outlines are the parts of the fast survey that are more or less complete. And the the thin lines haven't been started up yet. So there's a thin rectangle there, at the lower right. Tony, is it possible to tell what the seeing is at the other telescopes on Mauna Kea? Um, I can ask around and then I'll report back. Thank you. I'm just wondering if we need to do another Myra because our seeing is not, not great. So what was the elevation on the first Myra? Uh, the elevation on the Myra was uh, 55. Okay. Percy, do you think it's worth doing a Myra? even after this first 20 minute exposure? Well, you know, normally 
There is a, I guess we're, we're, we're getting a feeling. If you are 15 degrees in delta in elevation, you're pretty much the same elevation. That you That's when we did it. I'm just thinking of temperature changes across the night. Yeah, it should it should correct on the look up table telescope itself. Yeah, yeah, but still, it, it is worthwhile to ask around. Just to... Okay, let's see. Right. I mean, we can mark base so that the realignment will be very quick. Yeah, mark base and record the angle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're not doing offsets, right? We're not doing any offsets, no. Okay. Yeah, I'll mark base here. And I'll make note. I just think it's, you know, the last Myra, I mean, sorry, the last final alignment, the seeing looked like it was 0.9. If we do a Myra, I would do a Myra about an hour. Uh, let me think. How far would I do a Myra? I would still do it in two hours east. I'm sorry, two hours west. Because you can see that in the facts, and you can see that it's still about two hours. Uh, where is it? Two hours 10. Yeah, I would do two hours west of here. So it would be for the rest of the night. Mm, let me think about okay. this. It's okay. 12. I would do one and I would do 90 minutes west. 90 okay. minutes west? 90 minutes west and off the current mask, off the current position. Because we have three hours before the night ends and we've got one mask done. If we improve the seeing, we might be able to get this one and two more. But if the seeing is where we'll only get a total of three masks. Okay. Um, Subaru reported they're getting about 0.65 arc seconds in G. Well. Wow. At air mass 1.22. Okay. Pointed northeast. Yeah, I suspect uh, Myra will improve things. I wonder if we should just cut this at 900 and do it now. I'm tempted to do that. No point in seeing this 1200 second through if we, if we think we might be able to improve the image quality. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So as soon as this one finishes, I will move the grating to zeroth order and just in preparation for an alignment later, but. I think it's a good decision to do a Myra. So please mark base and rotation like. Uh, Exposure complete. Okay. Yep. So 90 minutes west of here? Yes, please. Uh, Raj, I have a question. So yes. to run this other Myra, what like what location are you moving to DCD to do this? Readout complete. Um, what we do? Okay, uh, sorry, just one second. I'm right. Go, yeah, yeah. Go uh, for it. So, um, I guess you started the process for the Myra, right, uh, Tony? Um, yeah, we're slowing there now. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, um, oh. A new exposure started. I want to kill this because I had forgotten to kill the script. Okay, I'm just going to abort this. Oh, because it's on a series of three. It's on a series. So I'm going to actually kill this sequence here. Otherwise, it will start another one even after I kill this. So do you want to proceed? Are you about to abort the exposure? We'll lose your data. Yes, that's fine. Exposure because the, complete. I mean, it was no longer pointed at the right spot. So. 
Um, okay, yeah. So uh, what one does is, so we've got three hours of the night left, um, right? It's 12 o'clock here. Uh, well, it's, it's nine o'clock in Hawaii. And so we have three mm -hmm. more hours. And so the idea is to go not to the current position of the mask, but where it will be 45 minutes from now. Okay. Because all our masks are in the same region of the sky. So this sort of is the is doing a Myra at the position, at the mean position the telescope will be for the rest of the night. Okay. Which is better than doing it at its current position. Right. It's sort of doing it in the middle, in the mid-range of where the how the telescope will be pointed. Okay. Thanks. Sure, no problem. And that, that's what it means by 45 minutes west of here, meaning uh, in, yeah. if you don't change the declination, just change the uh, RA by 45 minutes. Uh, that's, um, yeah, that's where the telescope will be pointed. Oh, no, that's not, yeah, that's where M32 will be in 45 minutes. Sorry, M31 will be in 45 minutes. Exposure complete. And these presumably are Myra exposures that it's reading out. Let's make sure. DCD readout complete. After we align this mask and start a sequence, I, I might go get a bite to eat. I'm going to stop recording.